What I do on a day in and day out is I guess I'm a classic management consultant um, and I play in the hospitality industry, also in technology. So I'm gonna, this is part of a presentation that I do for uh, Cornell uh, University. I lecture there for the hotel school. Um, and part of this is very consultant driven, but I think it's a really interesting way to look at technology and look at your business. So I guess bear with me a little bit. We'll look through a couple of frameworks and try to just look at kind of how technology should uh, put, you know, enable your business and run efficiency in your business. So. Um, so we ultimately, any business, no matter the industry, right, has this kind of capacity to deliver, meaning you have the ability to go to market to deliver a customer value proposition to your customer and hope that they consume it. It's often a combination of people, process, and technology that work together in some sort of balanced fashion to then ultimately uh, create a profit formula. Right, no business, I, my dad used to say to me, a business that doesn't make money isn't a business, it's a hobby, and you're too young to have a hobby. <laughs> right? So start making some money. So ultimately, is how it all works together is process and people and technology kind of create that of a profit formula. Um, and that's that business optimization that we're looking to gain, right? So the people process technology component, it's an equal balance of all three that ultimately runs into this business optimization that technology is looking to kind of enable within your business. Um, we say that a fool with a tool is still a fool, right? So when you have technology and you bring technology into your organization, there's definitely a component there of um, cultural change at times, uh, the people element component, and making sure that you're setting your team up for success. So don't just assume that if you sign up with one of these great companies and you put it into your business, although there's probably do just automatically work, um, <laughs> you still need to get that change management component. You have to get your team on board. You have to make sure that the processes are in place in order to enable the technology to really be leveraged and get all that you can out of it. So just never discount the people component and also the process component that goes along with technology. And that equal balance in some ways allows you to gain that uh, business optimization. This is it, right? So this is called a uh, business canvas framework. And it's a really kind of cool framework to think about a business. And it's applicable to really any business that competes in, uh, in the common or, or, or modern marketplace. There's a really cool um, business model canvas online you could probably find that relates to Airbnb and also Tesla. Um, this one here, though, we can talk to in, in the lens of hospitality industry. So these kind of blocks or rectangles are all components to any sort of business um, that goes to market and competes in the marketplace, right? You have key resources that do key activities within your business that create some sort of value proposition for your business, right? Whether it's an entree, whether it's a, I don't know, consumer packaged goods, whether it's dumplings, right? They, they create a product that it has a value proposition to it. It then goes to market through channels and accesses a customer segment that you're trying to hit. And the customer segment then has a relationship with the product that you are creating, right? And, and how you can enhance those transitions the uh, customer relationship or the channels in which you get to your customer segment ultimately gives you a greater opportunity to win. Your customer consumes your product, creates revenue for your business. Your key activities that are done by key resources goes into your cost structure. So this kind of symbiotic relationship of all of these activities that happen within your business, right? Your chef's making food, right? You're creating a value proposition. You're using channels, right? Your dining room to allow that customer to actually consume that product. How you service that customer, well, that's your customer relationship, right? Or you could even say from an Amazon perspective, let's just use that as an example, distribution channels, right? Or communication channels, or how are they accessing their customer segment? All of those different interconnectivities are really where your business strives and where you deliver value to your customer. So often when I look to solve for problems in the classic management consulting perspective for a client in the hospitality industry and using technology, try to find one of these stars. And what does that mean? Technology is often a really amazing catalyst for optimization and efficiency when it's enhancing that bridge between one and the other. Meaning if your key resources are leveraging technology to do key activities in a more efficient and effective manner, right? then ultimately you're creating a better value proposition and ultimately driving more profit into your cost structure.
If you're leveraging technology to use communication channels for your value proposition to be brought to your customer segment in a more efficient and effective fashion, then your cost of customer acquisition is less. If you're using technology to enhance a customer relationship, well then ultimately you're accessing your customer segment with your value proposition in a more empowered way. If you're using a point of sale system to be able to optimize the way in which you're selling the product, right, or your customers can pay for your value proposition, well then it's running into your revenue stream into a more efficient and effective manner. So ultimately, you can take technology and bring it into your organization and let it live in one of these, I don't know, categories. I don't know, you could have technology be a key resource, potentially, but ultimately when it sits here or it sits there and it enhances or optimizes the connection between customer segment and revenue stream, or it's an easier way to get your value proposition to your customer segment, is really when you're able to leverage technology to enhance revenue for your business or to increase your profit margin and make a more efficient cost structure. So when you look at your business, whether it's catering, whether it's fine dining, whether it's fast casual, think about these different blocks, right? How do you access your customer segment? How do you build upon your customer relationship? How are you using technology to enhance your customer value proposition? And where does technology fit into this mix that allow me to do it better, more efficiently, or at even a higher level than I'm currently doing it? And I think that's the way that I like to look at technology when trying to solve problems for my clients. I'm trying to say, where can technology really enhance the interconnectivity of these boxes and really empower my organization or my business to um, make more money and be more efficient? So that's a business model canvas, kind of like a classic consulting framework, right? But I think it's a really important framework to think about your business in these key components. Because when you think about it like this, it really simplifies things takes the bias out of decision making sometimes and sees an opportunity to bridge those gaps or say, hey, how can I get to my customer segment better by using technology? How do I enhance my customer value proposition by using technology? How do I enhance my customer relationship by using technology? And I think a lot of these uh, young ladies here today will be talking a little bit about how their products um, enhance these different components of your business. There's a lot of technology in the marketplace, especially in the hospitality industry. I mean, that's for sure. I, I think somebody said to me the other, I guess, a couple of years back, it was like an arms race. Everybody's getting into the space. Everybody has a new technology. Everybody's doing something new. Um, and as, as hospitality industry is often a lagger in the, uh, in, in the technology space or even, if, even in the uh, how do you say, like optimizing processes at times. Um, there's been a lot of opportunity in the market to bring technology into this space. Um, and ultimately, there's a lot of different options. These are some maybe common uh, technologies that we see in clients and clients use in their business operations, but there's obviously a lot more. So um, that's just a little bit of a maybe a high level broad brush stroke around technology in hospitality operations and ways to look at it, people process and technology. And, how can you have stars right in that business model canvas to uh, to optimize things? So um, I'll pass it over. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Bird. Um, I'm the director of customer success at Bento Box, and I am so happy to be here with all of you today. Um, and so we have this nice little visual of some restaurants you uh, might recognize, um, but we are a marketing and commerce platform. Um, and we provide a guest experience online um, to help you drive revenue and connect with your, with your guests. Um, and so uh, we'll get into it um, in just a second, but um, this includes uh, services like your website, online ordering, reservations, events management, marketing tools, catering, j careers, gift cards, merch, ticket, you know, ticket events. Um, and so uh, currently we serve uh, 14,000 restaurants worldwide. Um, all over the country, um, everything from you know large hospitality groups like Landry's um, down to small mom and pop uh, businesses like the one that I'm a part of in Marietta, Georgia. Um, and so, move on here. Um, so to keep it kind of quick and concise, um, <laughs> our platform. These are um, some of our pillars here that we really uh, drive to do, strive to do for our customers. So building your presence online. Um, ensuring that you own your story, 
right? Because we all know that customers or you know guests love to get on Yelp and share their opinion. They love to get on Google and share their opinion. They love to snap photos on social and share their opinion, and that's all great. But you should also be able to own your story. This is your baby. This is your restaurant. And so this allows you to put your best foot forward and say, this is why I, we started this restaurant. This is who my team is. This is why we serve the food we do. And these are the photos that we're proud of, right? This is the information we really want to show to you. Um, also allows you to diversify revenue streams, um, especially some high margin uh, revenue streams like catering or private events. Um, engage your diners, marketing tools, um, gaining information, again, same thing, owning that information by having all of these different revenue streams in one place, you own that information. We're not uh, retargeting and remarketing to your customer base. So it's not like, hey, I placed this order on a delivery service, I won't name, name names. And then that delivery service then goes to your guests and says, hey, order from us in general, right? This is you owning that information, which is really important. And then also increasing operational efficiency. Uh, you know, I before coming to Bento Box, I've been there six years. Um, I've only worked in the hospitality industry since I was 15, um, and so I know that there is there never is enough time. And then the moment you think you have enough time, you know, two servers call out and your hot water's not working. Right. Um, so <laughs> we don't have time. And so how can <clears throat> having all of this in one place? <clears throat> excuse me help you save time. Great. So again, this is just basically what I, what I wrapped up, but um, you know, a lot of fun little catchphrases up here uh, that we all love to talk about, SEO, ADA, all the hot topics, but putting those in the hands of professionals who are doing this day in, day out, so you have that safety net, you have that comfort, you have people guiding you. Um, you know, as we were just talking about, uh, the tech stack for restaurants is enormous and sort of like adding things on one by one ad hoc can get really overwhelming. You're speaking to different people, you know, something comes out about GDPR, you're like, what is that? That's not what I do. Um, and so really having a team that's able to help support you in that. We spoke about all these various revenue streams, um, engaging diners, um, and then also outside of just your website and e-commerce, you know, how are you connecting that for a holistic experience with your email marketing, with your social, um, with video content, with engaging with your customers, um, and just creating like this holistic view start to finish um, with, your, with your customer base. And so um, that's a little bit about Bento Box. Okay. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Samantha Finkelstein. I am with Simple. Um, right now I am running our partnerships program. Um, we are a new company and what we're really looking to do is disrupt the supply chain right now. Um, historically, it has been a very antiquated system um, with very siloed uh, stakeholders within it. So those three are going to be our manufacturers, ultimately, that pass down to distributors, and then everybody in this room is going to be ordering from those distributors to you get to the restaurant. There are a lot of costs involved in those. Um, being that they are so siloed, they don't share any data, um, and all of those costs ultimately get passed down to you as operators, and then you have to ultimately pass them down to consumers. Um, so what we're really looking to do is leverage all of this data together to offer you better pricing, and what we're old, <laughs> so to kind of get started, um, the manufacturers have many costs involved with selling to their distributors. So those ultimately, they don't have any visibility into who the ultimate buyer is today. They're currently marketing with no direction. Um, so those costs ultimately get passed down to distributors and they have no idea where their product is going. So what we're trying to do is take in all of the data from restaurants to see which distributors you're currently purchasing from. Those SKUs are then ultimately associated with the manufacturer and we can provide them with anonymized data to ultimately find out where their product is going and which specific geographic areas. 
um, with purchasing volumes associated with those so that they can ultimately offer you better pricing and market to you directly. Um, what we're going to be able to do is provide you visibility into your current market prices and how your pricing compares to those. So we ingest all of your invoice data and we're going to show you within a five mile radius, within a 10 mile radius, what um, that ultimate price is as a general uh, average price. So for example, let's just say right now you're purchasing 10,000 pounds of uh, ground beef on an annual basis and you're currently paying $2.87 for that. You're going to be able to come into this platform and see that in your area, the general market is actually paying $2.50 for that. So you're now paying 37 cents over and you can go back to your or pardon me, your vendors and you can have a discussion with them about lowering that price. Additionally, you're going to have visibility into what other vendors in your area are providing that exact same product from the exact same manufacturer. And they're going, you're going to be able to request bids for those all in one place without having to pick up the telephone, without having to go online and research and spend many hours. Um, and you're going to be able to open yourself up to receive bids directly from those vendors. So they can notice, okay, I have a new restaurant in the area. They're going to be doing this much purchasing volume. I'm interested in offering them some new pricing so that I can go ahead and bring them on as a customer. They're not going to be able to see the name of your restaurant or anything like that. It's all going to be very much anonymized. But again, putting the power back into the restaurant operator's hands, whereas historically it's always been within the vendors. Um, right now our customers are seeing about 5 to 25% on annual savings of their cost of goods uh, as a whole. So that is food, supplies, disposables, anything and everything that you can imagine. It can be all the way down to your oil that you're picking up. Um, right now they're saving 48 hours on their purchasing because we do have a very automated and streamlined uh, purchasing system. Again, you're going to go into one place. You're going to see all of the products that you currently order. You're going to see the vendors that you currently order from and you're going to have the ability to order from new vendors that you might not have known about that offer the exact same item and maybe a better price. Um, and then from there, ultimately at the bottom line, you're going to see six to 8% margin improvements because again, we're eliminating many of these costs and helping you focus on increasing revenue. What we did here was we pulled some of the quotes from the James Beard Foundation and, and NRA, um, kind of talking a little bit about right now the broken supply chain and how um, inflation has had a huge effect on your current supply costs and how we're able to help combat those. So right now, one of the biggest things, you know, despite skyrocketing costs and availability constraints for food ingredients, chefs really haven't changed much of their sourcing practices because they haven't had the ability to change anything. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to be able to offer you automated vendor price comparison so we can pull out all of the vendors that are offering that sell your specific product. We're going to show you what all of their different prices are um, and how you can go ahead and uh, find new vendors that carry some of those products that you might not have known about previously. 83% um, per of the respondents for the James Beard survey had no more than two units in their operation. And I think, as we all know, the smaller your business is, the less buying power you have because you have less purchasing volume. Obviously, much of these larger conglomerates can get much better pricing because they are purchasing significantly more. Um, so what we're really looking to do is empower the small business operators to get the pricing that some of these much larger groups are getting. Um, and what we do is we actually bring together that anonymized data from all of the small business owners as a community purchasing volume. Um, Right now, we're experiencing tons of supply shortages. So again, rather than spending a ton of time looking out and looking into finding new vendors, who's providing that product, who's going to be able to get it to you, get it to your front door, deliver it on time, and be able to continue bringing that in, we're going to do all of that work for you on the back end and bring it right to your inbox so you can find exactly what you're looking for. And then last but not least, um, you know, the food prices have increased 
highest in a 12 month increase since 1980. So unless you've been doing this for over 50 years, this is something brand new that nobody's ever experienced. It's always been a very hard and difficult process handling the purchasing and procurement for any restaurant. And what we're really looking to do is bring all of the data straight to you and let our team do all of the brunt work on the back end so that all you have to do is go online, take a look, and make the decisions that are best suited for you and your business. OK, I'm going to bring some lightness to this conversation. <laughs> You're all like, ah, oh, technology. Um, so I, um, just because I'm standing here, it does not make me any different than you all. We're all business owners. We're all entrepreneurs. Um, 13 years ago, when I began my career, you could have asked anyone if I'd be standing here talking about technology today. It would be a joke, like hysterical. Um, but there I am on a slide. I'm co-founder and CEO of Panso. Um, we, you know, I started my career on the floor working for a crazy and wild celebrity chef, um, working my way up through the organization to vice president of brands and marketing. And I'm sure you all can imagine what that experience was like. I would not change it for the world. Um, the latter part of my career, I built my own consulting agency where I was managing business development for chefs and independent operators. Um, you know, <laughs> this industry brings me great joy, as I'm sure it does to everybody in this room. And um, you know, the past three years really have told us like it's tough. This is a very tough industry, and you know, it's we're all just trying to figure it out. And so, um, a lot of my clients prior to Panso were trying to figure it out and couldn't figure it out. Um, and I'm sure many of you all know folks who couldn't figure it out. And so I um, embarked on building Panso because it was sad and really bugged me to see our industry have such a shock. Um, and Panso really essentially was started to help an industry find a sustainable way to build a business through useful technology. Um, and looking at the landscape, technology is really tough and complicated. Um, it's really hard to grasp, like, where do you even begin, right? Um, we can take this word, for instance, omnichannel. How many of you have been pitched the latest, greatest omnichannel platform or have seen omnichannel as a buzzword in your marketing materials? Show of hands. OK, a few of you. Um, I've been living in the Bay Area way too long. So <laughs> um, omnichannel, what does it even mean? I'll give you a hint. It's all your revenue centers. Um, all of your revenue centers. Right now, there isn't a platform on the market that allows you to manage your revenue centers. So that's exactly why I built Panso. Um, we are the first platform that allows you to control your in-store and online business um, on one platform at the same time. So what does that mean? Um, for the first time, you have control over your reservations, your delivery and takeout, your catering and events, your activations and experiences that you host off-site, as well as your e-commerce business. Um, we're a POS at our core, so you're able to run all of your revenue centers and your transactions through our platform. One last thing, we also control your website. And why we do that is to enable, enable you and allow you to have actionable insights and data points on your customer. And so you now, for the first time, can see the entire customer experience through all of your revenue centers on one platform. And so you're going to hear a ton of tech jargon, I'm sure, and you already have. It's my second language. Um, I live in the Bay Area, so it has to be. And I'm now running a software company, so it needs to be. Um, if you have any questions, need any translations, please feel free to let me know. My co-founder is in the back here, Manav. He is tech. So if you would like to speak any tech, get geek on it, he's here to chat with you. Thank you.
wanted to ask, to start with a quick question to you, Stephen, in terms of the, um, the business canvas framework, because it ties with what everyone else has t talked about too, is it realistic to optimize all six of those stars? Is it realistic? Probably yes, I would say so. Um, and I would say based on the capacity or capabilities of the organization, I would say you could either try to, as my colleague would say, get rid of the headache or go through the headache in one shot um, or stage it. So I think what you really try to look at is saying, hey, where can I deliver most value to my organization the quickest? There's some quick wins there, some low hanging fruit. So whether it's uh, customer channels, right, and getting uh, access to your customer or um, greater insights to your, your customer journey, right, and that's something that you're really lacking in, then maybe that's where you'll start. Um, but ultimately, there are some solutions that can allow you to, to get one or two stars at the same time, right? But um, I would say that it is probably uh, realistic to say that you can get all of those stars, right, or all of those optimization opportunities um, at one time or in an initial effort or over a period of time. But also, just you know, we have to keep in mind that technology continues to evolve. So what you are accomplishing today, maybe in you know six months or six years there might be progress in that space of the technology world and ultimately might have to optimize again. But I think it is realistic, for sure. Great, that's good news, right? Um, and I, you mentioned the speed of technology and I think that's a question for all three of you. So you're, you're solving issues that have been created in a way by technology, through technology. So what do you tell people when they tell you, why should I pick you because you know, is there another better product coming in six months? Or how do I make those decisions? Um, what stays with me? What, how are we embarking this relationship for the long run, right? Like, how are you helping me for the next 10 years of my business, not the next 10 months? Whoever wants to. Sure, I think that every restaurant is unique and different, right? Every single person sitting in this room, you're not all doing the same thing. It's a different concept. What you need is different. The people that you're interacting with is different. So I think the first thing that you really need to assess is what's most important to you, similar to what Steven just said. Um, there is so much technology flooded in this market, and all of it is being marketed to you and telling you that it's going to change your life and make everything better, and you're going to receive so much ROI. It's going to improve your revenues, and it's going to improve your margins. Um, but I think that you really have to dig in and assess how usable is this for me in the long term? If this is something that you're not going to be able to make habitual within your operation and your entire team and organization, then it's not going to be of high value to you in 10 years. It's going to be something that, as you said, is going to take 10 months to stand up in and of itself, and you're not going to actually be able to leverage the value that's coming out of that. So I think first dig in, assess what you need more than anything, assess what you can actually take on rather than just taking on everything that's being presented to you, and then put in the time and effort to really optimize that piece of technology before bringing on an entire tech stack. Yeah, definitely piggybacking off of that. I think one thing that um, I always urge people to ask when they're talking to you know, a sales rep at a tech company uh, or a restaurant tech company is, you know, what is a product that you currently have that I'm not utilizing that you think I should be? Two reasons. One, that will help you see, do they know my business and are they listening to me? Are they trying to sell me something when I ask that question that actually I, I don't do? It's not a part of my business strategy. And they're just trying to sell what they want to sell and they don't actually understand what my needs are. And two, um, if they do offer something up that does speak to you, it allows you to see you know, what that company can <clears throat> offer to help you grow. And think outside of the box. You know, A lot of times we'll have people say, oh, I don't do that. You know, and I get that, but we have to push ourselves, especially in this day and age. Technology is is moving so fast. You know, it's like now, um, you know, the kids are using TikTok to find their restaurants. You know, what a year ago that wasn't happening. You know, it's like we have to stay up to date. So you can learn from those conversations on what you might need to be doing that you're not currently, and you can also learn how well someone is listening and how they understand you. Um, and the other thing I would say is service. Um, 
Granted, I'm the director of customer success, so service is really important to me. But um, it should be to you too, because again, you don't have the time and you aren't, you don't want to be a tech expert, or maybe you do, and that's great. But maybe not everyone in the restaurant, maybe your GM or the reservationist or someone managing your events isn't. Um, you know, we, we offer 20, uh, seven days a week phone and email support. All of our customers have a dedicated customer success manager who helps them think strategically. Most of my team is coming from the restaurant and hospitality industry. So I would really look at that too um, when you're talking to different companies. What service will I be given? And if I need you during dinner service, will you answer? It's important. In addition to that, I think you know your business best. So as you're looking at technology to support your business, you want the tech to not be working against you. So look at your growth trajectory and ask the folks working at these tech companies or your partners, you know, where are you going and how can you support me as I grow? So as I'm looking at revenue channels, how do, I, how do I get into CPG and begin to sell into another revenue center? Um, and does the tech that you're currently on support that? And will it ever? Um, and then what type of data points are you getting from them? So just looking at the partnership from a whole, you don't want to be working for the tech. You want the tech to be working for you. Um, so just understanding that dynamic between your business and the technology that's being used to support that. And Brittany, I'll add one example that you gave me when we, we talked a few weeks ago and we got a great demo on, um, on Ponso that really, from a marketing perspective, made so much sense, right? The fact that Eventbrite can be linked into your event. So let's say I came to a wine dinner um, and then I never, I'm not back in your, upper, in your restaurant. The fact that you can send me a targeted email for that was something that I found really appealing as a customer, being like, oh, because I get those emails from all other companies. I'm on Instagram five minutes. I have five emails in my uh, Gmail selling me stuff that I just saw on Instagram. And restaurants are not really capturing that really well. And there's such a way to do that, right? Like, oh, you were just looking at, um, you follow 17 Mexican restaurant accounts on Instagram. Here's the one closest to you. And here's an offer from Margarita if you come in or something like that. So there's so much there that can really be captured that we're not really using yet as best as we can. Yeah, um, to that point, like right now, just a little knowledge on how technology works, right? So you're using somewhere between five, maybe 10 different platforms to run your revenue centers. You have a reservation platform, you have an events platform, you have your e-commerce business on a Shopify or another website or Bento. Um, and it's just, it's, it's fragmented and it's broken. So when you look at that, you have to pull the data points on your customers from every different platform that you're on. Um, Panso is a one-stop shop, essentially. You don't need all of those other platforms. And because we're controlling the website, you're getting first-party data on your customer. You're getting information on the customer, the products they're buying, in what revenue channel their center they're buying it within. You're starting to understand your events customer is actually a regular guest dining in your restaurant. It's the first time you're ever having this view on a customer, which without the customers, you have no business. So they're the most important component here. And to Anne's point, you have this information, your marketing completely changes at this point. You can curate it and customize it and speak to your audience and be able to engage with them in a new way that feels welcoming and warm and joyful, all the reasons why we're here. Steven, so we heard from Lauren, Brittany, and Samantha the kind of questions that they or that they, that uh, people should be asked them or the, or the conversations they're having. What do you recommend to your clients when you meet with them? What should they be asking when they meet with a founder or with a sales rep? Ha. Huh. Um... I think everything that everyone shared was was really of value. Um, I think one of the things that I heard, which was great, which was, um, you know, making sure that they're just not trying to sell you something because that's their goal and they're trying to hit their numbers, but they actually know about your business, 
right? So having somebody really dialed into what you do, what your business model is, and understanding how you operate, how you make money, them tying that together with their sales pitch, right? Because that's ultimately what they're trying to do um, often, that really allows there to be a correlation, right? Between what you're trying to achieve as a business owner and how they can catalyze or optimize what you're trying to achieve. So often, you know, posing questions about how the technology might enable key components of your business operations and kind of testing that technology or that salesperson or, or that owner per se and having them react and answer in an appropriate manner that actually feels like they're gonna be adding value to your business I think is super important because it just says how much they care about what you're doing, um, how much they know about what you're doing, and how applicable their solution is to what you do. Um, so I think really trying to, to solve in that space a little bit will, I think, is a, a good litmus test, definitely as a starting place. And are there times when technology is not the answer? 100%. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, something that I that we talk about in my group a little bit here at Cone Resnick is um, really investing capital into technology that's a volatile uh, space, right? So let me give you an example. A general ledger um, that you have for your business operations, your accounting system, they've been the same for probably about 200 years and probably will be the same for the next 200 years, right? So foundational technology at times that is a core component to your business, there's not that much volatility in that space or in that business need. So allocating capital to something like that, you're gonna pretty much have um, a safe investment in some ways, right? I think the prioritization of technology and how it can really enable your business is important, um, but overspending tech for our technology in an area that's somewhat volatile to the way in which you operate or the technology itself is volatile, meaning um, you know, it's an emerging kind of technology or an emerging space in the technology world as it relates to hospitality, could be a little bit risky, right? And that might not be the best um, solution, but again, it all ties back to what really drives value to your business, right? So um, technology isn't always the best solution. Spending appropriately on technology is important as well and always driving it back to your business to make sure that it's really delivering the value that you need is super important. You all were nodding forcefully when I asked that, so anybody else wants to answer? <laughs> well, I think that the first thing I was thinking of when you asked that question is that I think a huge misconception with technology today is that people believe that it should be replacing humans. Mm -hmm. And technology is not intended to be replacing people in the hospitality space, at least. I can speak to the hospitality space. Um, it is looking to generate efficiency and optimize the people that you do have in place so that you can do what matters most, which is take care of your guests and offer an experience rather than be sitting in an office and continually be putting out fires left and right, being in the, at the restaurant 18 hours a day, doing monotonous work that can very easily be streamlined by leveraging technology. However, we're not looking to replace humans. You're always going to need those. This is just looking to better um, optimize your business and efficiency. Yeah, definitely. And <clears throat> also, you know, um, I think that is a common misconception too, is that, you know, you can't have hospitality with technology. And agreed, it should not replace it, you know. And, and, and it, should, it should work for you in the sense of, for example, we have a feature that is a contactless payment. So um, a way that you could use that to um, improve hospitality would be, hey, say, say you're here in New York. I know a lot of cities have done this outdoor dining. All of a sudden now we're open indoor. Um, there's a staffing shortage. I can't hire enough people. I'm slammed because now the space I have doubled, which is great that I have this outdoor seating and I have this indoor seating. Well, why don't we do contactless payment just for the patio or just for outside? And inside, we still have our bartenders and our servers, and we're not utilizing that. So where can you use pieces of that to improve the experience instead of just wipe out, replace everything, is what I would suggest. I hadn't thought about that question, but the human um, element is an interesting one. Also in terms of, and that, brings back, that goes back to what Irene was saying of what happens if everyone on your staff knows your numbers, right? Um, who on your staff 
should be, I mean, obviously there's, there's technology that everyone has to use for whatever reasons, but in terms of the data and analyzing the data, what are some of the su suggestions you make in terms of how to structure that and who to work on that with on your staff? Because as a founder or owner, of course you're going to do it, but it can be hard to do by yourself. Um, what do you recommend when you're meeting with people around data? No. Sure, I guess I, I'll jump in really quickly. Um, again, I think that's a very nuanced question depending on your business and your operation and how large you might be and how many managers you might have in place. If you are much larger and you have the opportunity to have different managers overseeing you know, your wine program or your alcohol program versus your food and you, know, you have a unit accountant that's looking into your entire P&L on a regular basis, that's wonderful. Um, I think that whoever you put in place that is responsible for anything related to numbers or a budget um, within your organization should have all of the data points that you're currently collecting. And I am going to veer off the question slightly here, but I think a big thing to keep in mind as you are assessing technology is ensuring that you actually have the rights to your data and that you will always be able to take those with you. And another big piece I think that you should be asking as you are assessing this is how that data integrates and aggregates with other data pieces and other systems. Because oftentimes bringing a lot of that together is going to offer a much a much fuller picture for you to go ahead and make decisions on. Um, but then bringing it back in here and tying it back together, oftentimes I think you can um, allocate responsibilities to individuals that previously had been very siloed that can now oversee things more cohesively um, by analyzing some of this aggregated data pulled together and showing you a much different picture than you ever had the ability to um, look into previously. I hope that made sense. I know I said a quite a few different things, but I, I was trying to tie many different things together because it is, again, as you said, a very fragmented industry. Yeah, I'll yeah. take this. I think, you know, when, first of data, like where do you begin? Um, and then how do you translate that to the rest of your team? So I'm always in the mindset of full transparency, completely how I operate. And I'm sure many of you are the same way because once you are able to provide tools and knowledge to your entire team, they can all make well-informed business decisions on the fly and be able to act and learn and bend based on every scenario. So when you look at technology right now and you have to pull data from different platforms and then push it through your POS and have someone on your team try to analyze that, it's cumbersome, it's clunky, it's not always 100% accurate. So how are you making decisions on your business if you don't have data that's 100% accurate? Um, so by using our platform, we are enabling you to have those touch points. We're running automatic reporting, daily reports, pushing those to your email. Whomever on your team wants to see them, needs to see them. And being able to use that information on a regular basis as opposed to at a pre-shift meeting or at a monthly all hands, like just having those systems in place at your fingertips is what's necessary to be able to make decisions against your business. Thank you. Um, one thing you made me, you said made me think, I don't know what is happening with my technology. <laughs> We have seen it is fallible these last couple of days. Um, download your data, right? Make sure that you download it. And we've seen, um, I mean, that's social media related, but so many restaurants built such lar large followings on Instagram. Um, it, it's such a great way to capture you know, and, and to talk about your specials, all these things you're doing, get people into your business. When Instagram goes down, which has happened, you're shut out of reaching out to your customers, right? So make sure that you really own and have as much ways yourself of having your data on your hard drives, desktop, whatever. That's really, really key. Before opening up to the audience, one last question. Um, Samantha, you mentioned six to eight percent margin. What is a return I should be looking for in terms of margin when I'm considering technology? What makes it worth it for me to invest the time and the money to take on a new technology for my business? Stephen, they're all looking at you. Yeah. Me, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's like a good Stephen <laughs> I don't know if I have a specific answer from a metric perspective. You know, if it's like a 20% ROI or if it's a 10% ROI. I think 
you know, if I was going to put my operator hat back on, um, I would say um, what what is what, what's right or what feels good would be, am I building a new capability for my business? Am I doing something that I haven't been able to do before? Right? Whether there's a tangible ROI there or not, don't know. But can I now, you know, sell online and I wasn't able to before? Right? That in itself, I think, is a certain amount of return on investment, meaning a capability build. Um, or if there's a, you know, a quick win optimization opportunity, you know, something I think that we probably have all experienced was just, you know, like the, um, the uh, digital upload of invoices, right? That was a big thing maybe five years ago or a couple of years ago. I'm sorry. It's a great component of every technology stack. I don't want to say that it's uh, outdated, but that was like a huge quick win, right? I mean, for your finance department and just for your operators, you know, for um, the kitchen staff to be able to just take a picture and to upload and automate that invoice processing, that was just a, a huge uh, ROI, in my opinion, and a quick win for a lot of operators. So. Um, I don't know if I would say specifically there's a, a metric. I'm sure in a Gartner study there's a metric there. Um, I don't have something off the top of my head. I think it's more around are you building a capability that you haven't been able to um, bring to market before, right? And are, is a quick win and, and a kind of an optimization realization happening um, in some aspect of my operations? And I think those are really two great returns on investment. Great. Thank you.